Welcome back in. It's A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, you search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Don't forget to subscribe and like our YouTube channel as well. Joining us now from The Athletic, covering the Atlanta Hawks, a uh, good friend, noted Yankee fan, and I say that because I'm one too, and you can hate us both for that, but we're in first place, so there's that. <laughs> Chris Kirsner of The Athletic joins us here on A to Z. Uh, Chris, I hope you got some rest. I know the NBA draft can be a little bit of a slog when you get towards the second round, but it was an interesting night to say the least, and let's start at the top of the Atlanta Hawks. I don't think A.J. Griffin is a bad pick. He's a great three-point shooter. He's lengthy on the perimeter. Um, I don't know if defense is his calling card per se, but this doesn't seem like a bad pick because you can never have enough shooting in the NBA. No, I like the pick a lot. Um, you know, A.J. was expected to go much earlier. I actually thought the Knicks would have grabbed him. The Knicks ended up trading that selection at, at 11, but – um, wasn't expected to be on the board, and that's what uh, soon to be general manager Landry Fields actually said after the draft that you know AJ was someone who they had higher um, on their board, didn't expect him to be available, and I think that was evidenced by the Hawks just not really having any conversations with him uh, throughout the pre-draft process. He wasn't expected to be um, at 16. Didn't work out for Atlanta. Uh, didn't really have any conversations with them prior to uh, the draft. The only conversation they had with AJ was at uh, the draft combine um, earlier last month. So the fact that he was available at 16, I think, is a win for the Hawks. Do I think that AJ is going to help them this coming season? No, he's 18 years old. Um, he's, he's certainly a project. Like you mentioned, he is a is a very good shooter. Um, you know, in in the ACC games that Duke had this past season, uh, AJ shot forty nine percent from three. Is that going to happen at, in in the NBA? Probably not. But the fact that he's playing with Trey Young does bode well for someone like him who is such a good shooter. Because as we've seen with Trey, he he's one of the best at getting guys open. And AJ is going to get a lot of good looks when you know his time is ready, but for the Hawks getting better this coming season, I mean that's still to be determined because you're you're not you're not one of those teams that is going to be relying on a rookie to make an immediate impact anymore like like right. they were when you know Trey was a rookie and DeAndre was a rookie, John was a rookie. Like that's just not the case anymore for the Hawks. So. For those fans thinking that you know he's he's going to be the savior this year and he's the the missing piece for an upcoming run to the finals, I would I would hold off on that. Maybe in, in three four years, um, because he is so young. So that's yeah. that's what I would say about this pick. Is yes, I think it's a good pick. Do I think it's going to make the Hawks better this coming season? No. Schematically, and again, I know he hasn't drawn comparisons to this specific player, but he almost feels like, you know, to use the Golden State Warriors as the as the the, the calling card here, like like the Clay Thompson for Trey. Like, I mean, he plays the three and the two, can be the shooting guard, excellent perimeter guy. To this point, solid on defense, not his calling card, but solid on defense, and he just gives them that other option on the wing um, that Steph has had his entire, you know for the last six years that have really ultimately made a difference. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing with, with uh, AJ is um, I know you said he's, he's solid on defense. I, I wouldn't say he's solid on defense. I think he's, he's bad on defense right now. Um, but, the, but that's <laughs> he's to be, he's like to. <laughs> he is. Um, but again, that's to be expected for someone who is 18 years old. Like it's very, very, very rare to have someone who's, who's that age to be, good on that end because it takes a lot to be uh, a good defender i think he has the tools to be a good defender one day again if he ends up playing this coming season do i think he's going to be good defensively no um and that's i think that's something that the hawks still have to address moving forward in this offseason they have to get better defensively um any rookie that they would have gotten probably wouldn't have made them better defensively um, so that's something that they're going to have to address through, through trade and, and free agency. But as far as him being a potential Clay Thompson, I think that depends on how good he is defensively because not only is Clay a really good shooter, one of the best of all time, but he's also good defensively. So if Griffin can, can use that, that 
um, that length and athleticism that he does have, I think it's it's a it's a great pick. But again, we're probably not going to know if he, if he is someone who's going to be really really good for several years down the road now. Yeah, and, and obviously, still he has a lot of growing to do mm-hmm. as well physically, and there's still more um, you know size that he can actually and, and strength that he can actually gain. But speaking of size and strength needed, that brings us to the Hawks' second round pick and Ryan Rollins, another guard. Uh, who was a, a good three-point shooter, can be a scorer as well, um, and whose draft stock, you know, for those who didn't watch a lot of Mac basketball, his draft stock, you know, was uh, w- was on the rise, and there were some who thought he might stay another year and really try to get inside the lottery. Um, but, you know, he's there, and the Hawks take him 6'4", 180 pounds, but a 6'10 wingspan. So, again, long. Uh, I wouldn't say a great defender, but long enough that it's th- at least the direction they're going with is more length and more shooting. So they actually traded – I mean, they, they sold that pick. They sold pick 44. So Rollins wasn't the pick for uh, the Hawks. So they, they sold pick 44 um, to, to Golden State, Golden for, State. Two, for $2 million, and then they got pick 51 instead. So Rollins wasn't the pick for Atlanta. Um, and I think for the Hawks, um, the – I do think that selling pick 44 is, is is a bad look for the franchise. There's not there's no sugarcoating that. There's no basketball reason why the Hawks sold pick 44. The only reason why they sold pick 44 is for Tony Ressler's pockets. And if you're a Hawks fan, that should be something that frankly pisses you off because um, the point of the draft is to get the most value possible and moving back seven spots that doesn't help you out um that's not to say that the the guy that they got at 51 tyrese martin isn't going to be a a good player or rotation player one day but the fact of the matter is the draft the whole point is to get the best value possible and the hawks move back seven spots and again second round picks rarely pan out but the fact that they did this is just not a good look for the Hawks. They have been preaching that they want to get better, and they make a non-basketball decision to move back seven slots in the draft. I don't understand it. There's no way that uh, the Hawks can sell that to the fan base, and I hope that Hawks fans realize that um, the the reason why they did this trade was only to – put $2 million in Tony's pockets. It doesn't help the salary cap. It doesn't help the luxury tax. It doesn't help them in any way possible on the floor. Um, So if I was a Hawks fan, I would not be feeling great about what the Hawks did in the second round. What about John Collins, who many people think is going to be gone? Obviously, it didn't happen last night. So is that because there wasn't an opportunity to move him to move up or there wasn't the right offer? What, what, what is your, what are you hearing? What's the speculation on why Collins is still on the roster today where many people thought he might've been moved last night? Yeah. I mean, it's not that there were no offers, like there, there are definitely offers out there. It's just the fact that, um, you know, Travis Schlenk is not going to move Collins for, a, a player or players who don't help the Hawks. You know, again, they, they want to be better this coming season. They want to be better, you know, past this coming season. But, you know, this season in particular, like they, they've made it very clear that they want to be better. Um, so the offers that were out there were just not good enough for the Hawks. It doesn't mean that John's not going to be moved. I, I, I'm still expecting him to be moved at some point. Even people close to John expect him to be moved. They don't expect him to be with the Hawks um, by opening night. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like there was a lot of um, noise in the weeks leading up to the draft of whether or not like they would use John to possibly move up to number four with Sacramento or possibly move up to number seven with Portland. Obviously, that didn't happen. John's still with the Hawks, but, you know, I I don't expect him to be with the Hawks long term. You know, free agency is beginning in, I believe, a week. It's June 24th, yeah, a week. Um, So it's possible that, you know, once free agency opens, 
um, you know, they could explore moving him at that point. They could also explore moving him at any time. You know, the the um, the the recent reporting is that the Hawks are are very interested in San Antonio guard Dejounte Murray. Uh, he mm-hmm. made the All Star yeah. team, was a previous All Defense selection. I think someone who the Hawks are looking at because they realize that. They want someone next to Trey Young who can handle the ball, um, who can create for himself and, and others. That's, I feel like, um, what the Hawks are, are looking at because of how um, you know that Miami series went in the playoffs where they just hounded Trey and they made him give up the ball. They made him play more off the ball. So getting someone like Murray, who's a really good ball handler, someone who is a, is a really good passer, I do think that that kind of move would help, but it's going to cost quite a bit. Um, you know, I've heard that um, not only would it include John, but it could possibly include another young player, whether that's Kevin Herter, whether that's Nyeka Kongu. Um, if they don't go that route, it would cost multiple picks. But the fact is, like, they have to get better. They know they have to get better. They they do think that Murray would be the, one of those guys who can not only make them better this coming season, but, you know, moving forward. So I think that remains to be seen what happens with John. But um, either way, I, I, I'm not expecting him to be with the Hawks for much longer. You know, real quick here, I, I said this earlier in the week, and I just wanted to get your thoughts on it, that, you know, making the Eastern Conference Finals – was great, but it might have been the worst thing to happen big picture because it accelerated the expectation level for where they should have been. Look, if they make the playoffs that first year of trade, let's say they beat the Knicks and get bounced in the second round of Philly, and then this year happens what happened, they lose to Miami. No one is really pushing the button saying, you know, they got to get they got to get better. They got to get I mean, they're still like at the beginning part of the process, but getting to the Eastern Conference Finals unexpectedly, while it was great and it was a lot of fun, it's changed the the perspective on what this team is and where they should be going because it's not easy to get from sixth in the East at best right now, objectively, as far as their roster is concerned, to the top three without making some major moves. I agree with you. Um, you know, getting to the Eastern Conference Finals, like you said, was great. It showed a lot of promise. It showed that, you know, you can win with Trey. Trey won many games in the playoffs for the Hawks. Um but again, the, the ultimate goal is to win a title. Yes, that's nice. Yes, that showed promise. But what we saw this season, I think, is probably the better picture of what this core can accomplish. Um, they struggled. They had to claw their way into the playing tournament. I think they're better than that. I think, like you said, maybe they're the sixth best team in the East ideally seventh best with what their roster currently is, that's not going to win you anything. Um, The East got better this season and the Hawks frankly didn't. Um, And that's, that's okay. It's not indicative of what they're going to be in the future. I think, um, I think they realized that in order to get to that next level and, and be included in the, in the Miami's and the, Milwaukee's and those teams in at the top of the conference, like they realize like they have to make a bigger move. I think that's why they are interested in someone like DeJounte Murray, because he, he is an all-star and, you know, he could certainly take them to the next level. He can at least help them get to the next level. Is he, is he going to be the, the reason why the Hawks win a title if they were to acquire him next season? No, like they still need more help than that. Um, they still need better defenders around the the um, periphery, the guys who are going to um, you know be the the dogs on on this roster. Like, they need some of those guys who just want to defend and lock people down. But um, I think for the Hawks this this off season, I've been saying it all along. It's an important one. Um, you know, Trey is is one of the top guys in the league. It's time to surround him with with really good talent. You know, he's all NBA, which means he's a top 15 player in, in people's eyes, and, and he is. And I think for the Hawks, he, he has to have better talent around him. Um, and I think that's what they're going to do. Yes it, yes, it was kind of um, boring last night for at the draft. They didn't make any like moves that are going to help them this coming season, but – 
you know, that's really the draft is really like the first night of the off season. That doesn't mean that it's over, that they're not, they're just running it back. Um, there's still a lot of time left to go until next season. And again, I'm expecting them to be better next season. I'm expecting them to make moves. Um, you know, just because it didn't happen last night doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It is wait and see. He is Chris Kirshner of The Athletic, covering the Atlanta Hawks. Thanks for the time, as always, brother. I appreciate it. Go out and enjoy your weekend now. Thanks a lot. All right. Take a time out. Come back. One thing, and only one thing Braves fans need to know. I'll tell you what that is coming up next here on ADZ on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. search Locked On Sports Atlanta.